Arthur, you won the title at Wimbledon last year with the odds against you. There's no need to ask if it had long been an ambition, but what sort of effect did it have on your life? Oh, it uh, made a great deal of difference. I think possibly because it cemented the uh, number one ranking for me since no one else in the top echelons won more than two major titles in the calendar year, 1975. So I was either by a process of elimination or just by popular election, <laughs> uh, put number one for that year. And personally? And personally, uh, I guess between Davis Cup, Wimbledon, and Forest Hills, those are the three things every kid knows about when he's growing up playing the game. And he wants to win. Hell, win. He just wants to be able to play in those three events. Some people dream of just playing there. I remember reading a, a People magazine, which is a very popular magazine in the U.S. which does short features on people. Uh, had a big cover story on Elton John. The last sentence was, hey, we traded all for the men's singles title at Wimbledon, <laughs> which I thought was, uh, uh, I wanted to call him up and say, uh, you better stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> being world famous and being black means that wherever you go, whether you like it or not, you're a sort of ambassador, a representative of your race. Is that a responsibility that you feel? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't like it, but I feel it, and I don't uh, shrug it off. Uh, mainly because there does still persist in the world myths about one, athletes in general, that they are all brawn and no brains, and specifically black athletes, that they have even less brain and more brawn, because uh, we tend to do disproportionately well in athletics, running, jumping, whatever, boxing. Um, and I uh, like to fight the myth. Um, and I assume that role uh, heartily, um, that there are lots of us, athletes in general, and, and black athletes in particular, who can think as well as run, jump, hit tennis balls, dunk basketballs, box, or whatever. Um, and of course, it also means you, you have a certain power. I mean, because you're famous. Only, because... only, only as long as you're still winning. Uh, if my ranking suddenly dropped to 50, uh, I mean, I'd still have a certain power, I guess, because I once was up near the top, but... I mean, if you care to visit South Africa or you care to draw attention to the apartheid situation, yes. then you pull a lot of weight. Um, I don't think... Yes. I wouldn't say a lot of weight. I would say uh, weight, yes, but just how much, I really don't know. And, uh, and after my four trips to South Africa, I really can't assess how much it has been, although I guess... Um, I stick out so much in that situation that uh, there have been lots of movements started to stop me from going. So if they think that much of my uh, clout, then uh, maybe I am having some influence. But that's are, are you conscious in any other way of your color, or has has success opened well, all the doors? You're always oh no, you're, you're you're always conscious of your color. Uh, if you're Polish or if you're Jewish. Uh, or if you're Russian, or uh, it's not immediately French, as obvious as being. If you're walking there. down the street. You don't know what that person is. Uh, you know definitely what I am, but uh, you get used to living with that, and uh, it's not really a problem, uh, unless sometimes I'm in New York City and I want to get a taxi, and uh, sometimes they won't stop because they think I'm going to Harlem. <laughs> I don't <laughs> live in Harlem, but anyway. <laughs> Well, one reason that as a, a youngster you had a lucky break in that your father ran the local park so you were able yes. to play on the tennis courts and then luckily for you someone spotted you and financed right. your training. Apart from you though, there don't seem to be uh, from America any up and coming young black players. Why is that? Um, black athletes in the US generally do well in those sports which are stressed in the public school systems because they're free. You go to school which is supported by the government and, uh, for nothing, and all the facilities are there for nothing. Basketball, baseball, track, football. Tennis, eh. uh, maybe the math teacher has been told by the principal, you teach tennis this spring, you be the tennis <laughs> coach. But Is now that's changing. Because of the popularity of, uh, of tennis, high schools are now starting to get fully accredited, you know, well-trained tennis coaches. 
and that situation is changing radically. Do you actually enjoy playing tennis? Oh, times? I enjoy it, yes. Yes, I, I like stressful situations. But so many days in every year of your life, it's one long procession of trains and planes and hotel bedrooms. Yes. And yes, it if is. you're not playing a tennis match, you then it's it finding well. something to do. Yes. Uh, well, it all depends on where you are. If you're in London, it's not a problem. London's, a, you know, it's my favorite city. So I don't have any problems finding things to do here. But if I'm in Cleveland, <laughs> I'm stuck. I don't know what to do in Cleveland. You'd learn to develop pursuits which um, complement your schedule. I read a lot, listen to a lot of music. I, r I write a lot. So tennis players finding themselves with lots of free time, some may want to spend it playing backgammon or watching other matches or just uh, doing absolutely nothing. You, you become professional time killers. You, do, you learn to do it very well. You stretch out meals. I mean, breakfast may last three hours. You're not eating for three hours, but you're just sitting there because you have nothing else to do. That sounds awful. It's, uh, it sounds awful. Uh, I'm sure lots of your readers would disagree, your, your viewers would disagree, for a week at least anyway. And what about possessions? So are you not materialistic in any way? I mean, do you have a, a home of your own? Do you have um, a... I... Uh, it's, it's something that, because I, uh, I'm always reading about such things, you know, Capitalism versus socialism, things like that intrigue me. Because I think the capitalist world is moving further left than the, the leftist world is moving further right. We'll probably meet someplace in the middle and have a bath together or whatever. But uh, one of the things that the leftists say about the capitalists is that they're materialistic. Somebody who has as many resources as I do, more than I need, it can make you feel guilty if you weren't born in that situation. If I were born wealthy, I would have no problem with it. But I was not born wealthy, so uh, uh, it's a dilemma for me. And right now, I have very few possessions. But not because I don't want them or wouldn't want to use them, but because there's no real need for them, logically. I don't have a car because I'm never in one place long enough to, you know, to warrant the expense of a, of a car. I don't have a house because I'm never in one place more than I spend more nights in London than I do any other city in the, in the world in a year. What about clothes? Clothes? No. Wouldn't have too many clothes because uh, you're only... <laughs> tennis players never travel first class internationally. And you're only allowed 20 kilos. <laughs> I don't own too much more than what I have in my suitcase upstairs. It's really a case of, of have racket, will travel, isn't it? Uh, yes, and I only have five rackets. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that... I'm being forced to do this. Well, quite. That, I mean, Nobody's that's sticking a gun point. to my head and saying, play tennis or do this or do that. I don't, don't have to. But how long can you go on living like that without... Oh, as long as, as long as you enjoy it. You lost to Roger Taylor the other day at Nottingham. Does that bode ill? Does that depress you in any way? Nottingham was a disaster. <laughs> yes. Um, I had one of those uh, just days when... Uh, mentally and physically, I just, and emotionally, just wasn't there. And I'll have more days like that. You don't like it, and it doesn't look good, but uh, some days you get up in the morning and you say, you know, I'd rather go back to bed. That's the way I felt uh, Monday morning. How much does it mean to you to win Wimbledon again this year? Well, it's a little bit like, uh, I guess it would feel to uh, someone who's riding a horse and has a fear of riding, in a way, has been thrown. And the only way to overcome your fear is to get back on the horse again and assert your mastery. That's sort of the way I feel. Everybody fears Wimbledon. It's such a formidable seven days if you're going to go all the way through it. And the only way to overcome the fear is to uh, get out there, play, see what happens.